In the last tutorial, I created the piston. And this works now by moving the top or the bottom around. We get a nice action out of the piston itself. What I want to add now is the spring. So the first thing to look at is creating the geometry for the spring itself. I started out with a helix here. And this was created with a MEL script I downloaded from highend3d.com called helix.mel. You can also build these by default now inside of Maya 7. And then a regular NURB circle. By selecting the NURB circle and then shift selecting the helix, I can head to the modeling menu set, surfaces, extrude. Here are the options I'm using. I'm going to use the extrude style of path, which means it's going to send that circle down the spiral as a path, pulling behind it the geometry as it goes. And at the result position of the path, I want to make sure that nothing shifts from that location. And the rest of these are defaults. So I'm going to hit the extrude key. And there you go. We get the geometry that I'm using over here on the right. Uh, I'm going to delete the temporary one here. OK, so that gets the geometry built. And the other important part is that I've kept the uh, circle, or rather the spiral, that's running through the center of this geometry. And this is going to be useful for deforming the geometry itself in a minute. The reason this is necessary, if I take a look at just scaling this spring, if I grab the scale tool, you'll notice that it is changing the profile of this geometry. It's warping it down into a little flattened tube instead of the circle profile that the spring should be able to keep. And if I stretch it out, you'll see it elongates into this oval. So just scaling it isn't enough if you're rigging something like this. What I'm going to do is I've deleted the history on both of these pieces of geometry, which allows me to freely move this spiral right now without having any kind of secondary effects. Now what I'm going to do is use that spiral inside of the spring as a wire deformer. And the way this works is I'm going to let me head out here, head up to the animation menu set, and under deform, wire tool, and I'll head to the options. Okay, let me reset those to their defaults. And the only one I'm going to change in here is the drop-off distance. And I just know from experience with this scene that a higher drop-off distance will allow the spring to, to be pulled around a little more neatly. So what this is looking for now is for me to select my geometry. I'm going to pick the spring and press the Enter key. And then press the select the spiral curve that's running through the middle of it and hit enter. Okay, I can close that. So now you'll see that I've just got the spring, uh, I'm sorry, the curve itself selected and it's going to pull the geometry with it. If you let me set this display level so you can see the spring, if I pick the spring here and just head to component mode and pick one of its CVs, you'll notice that it pulls like a, a cluster would as a deformer. It pulls that geometry around. Okay, so the way I'm going to use this now is by selecting my spring curve, which is the deformer, so the spring curve, and go ahead and scale this up and down. You'll see that it's not going to deform the shape of the profile on the actual geometry. This geometry is maintaining its shape a lot better than it did just straight scaling. And now I have something that I can move up and down for creating the deformation. Okay, so I'm going to reset that scale value to 1. Okay, so that's part of the problem solved. The other piece of the puzzle here is how to automate this so that whenever I select and move part of the piston, the spring does what it should do. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to need here is a distance tool. And this is found under Create, Measure Tools, Distance Tool. Okay, I'm going to just place one up at the top of the spring. And that creates a little locator. So I'm measuring from that point. And I'm going to hold the Shift key to constrain vertically. And I'm just going to select down at the bottom of the spring here. And there we go. So that creates this little measurement. It's 4.6 52008 units in the Miocene space. And you can see I'm free to just grab these around. So this is a useful little ruler that you can use inside of Maya. 
Um, the nice thing is that it's going to update along with animation in the scene so that I can use it uh, in real time to drive another attribute. Okay, so for this to work, the next thing I want to do is select my top locator and parent it to the top tube. And then I'll head down and select the bottom locator and parent that to the bottom tube. Okay, so now if you watch when I move the piston around, the distance tool is going to keep up with that. So as the distance grows, we get a new measurement. Okay, and then the last thing for me to do is uh, find a way to drive the scale of this spring curve, which is my wire deformer. I want its curve scale to be um, matched up with this distance node or a sort of normalized version of it. Okay, and the way I'm going to do this is by dividing the distance dimension value by itself and piping that value into the scale y of this spring curve. So the way this is going to work is first of all I'm going to parent the curve that's the wire deformer into the tube here. Okay, so now when I select and move the top ring, the wire deformer curve is traveling along with the tube and that deformer is pulling along the geometry. Okay, so the next step here is to head to the hyper shade. I'm going to go up to Window, Rendering Editors, Hyper Shade. Okay, and in this window what I want to do is select and graph the values of my distance dimension node. So I'm going to select that guy in the outliner and also this spring curve. So I'm going to select the spring curve and now I'll graph them inside the hyper shade. Now let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on in here. And I'm also going to open up my attribute editor. Okay, so if I look in here I've got the distance dimension node and its shape node sits right here. If I select that you can see I get the distance value that's at 4.652 that's off here on the screen right now. It's rounded down a little bit for display purposes. And I want to take that value and I want it to drive this spring curve but not directly. What I need to do in the middle here is use a multiply divide node. So I'm going to head up to the create general utilities multiply divide. Okay, I'm going to place that in the middle here and now the way this is going to work is I'm going to select the output of the distance dimension shape node and this little out arrow here I'm going to choose distance and I'm then going to pipe that into the input 1 X. Okay, if I look at the multiply divide node this is just a general math utility that I'm going to say I want an operation of divide and it's going to divide this first number that I piped in there and that's a live connection to this dimension node. I want to divide that by the same number so I'm just going to copy and paste this value. Okay so whoops let me try that again and press enter. So now what it's doing is it's going to get an answer of 1. It's dividing 4.652 by 4.652 and then I'm going to send that output, the answer to that division, the output x node or attribute, into the spring curves scale y. I can close this down now, the connection is made and if I try moving the piston up and down now you see that it's keeping pace with the translation up and down. I can stretch that or I can compress it way down a little further than you'd want to in reality. Well, that looks pretty good now.